I usually use processing to create generative art for my pen plotter. And those projects can vary a lot from sketch to sketch, but there are some common things that I always want to have in my sketches. So I made this basic plotter canvas that I can use as a starter template anytime I create a new project. I'll quickly go over the features of this and then I'll show a demo of how I use it in my projects. The first thing this plotter canvas template gets me is a canvas for my artwork. And that might not seem that interesting, but it's actually very helpful. I can have my sketch window always set to the same size or even running full screen, which is what I typically do. And then no matter what size screen I'm working on, I can see a proportional representation of the paper size that I'll be plotting to. And if I'm working on a paper size that's bigger than my screen, which is often the case, then the canvas will get scaled down to fit my screen. And in that case, it's not just scaling down this white rectangle, the template will also scale my stroke weight and give me the scaled pixels per inch that I should use in my sketch so I can always see an accurate representation of what my art will look like when it's plotted. For example, here I'm looking at a nine inch by six inch canvas with a one inch square drawn in the center. And I'm gonna be drawing this square with a two millimeter pen on my plotter, so I've set the stroke weight to two millimeters. And you won't be able to tell this from the video, but I have this set up so the square actually appears at actual size, one inch by one inch, on my physical display. But if I change the paper size to a much larger 11 by 14 piece of paper and then rerun my sketch, I can see it changed that paper size. It scaled it down to fit within the window, and it also scaled my square and my stroke weight to be proportional to the scaled paper size. That means that this square no longer appears at actual size on my monitor, and the stroke no longer looks like it's quite two millimeters thick, but I can see how that one inch square drawn with a two millimeter stroke will look in relation to the paper size when I actually plot it. If I wanna verify all those dimensions, I can use another feature of the plotter canvas where I can press G to bring up this grid. This is a grid of one inch squares that is again scaled in proportion to my canvas size. So if you wanna count all these larger squares, you can see that this paper is 11 squares by 14 squares. And if I wanna switch back to that smaller size, which I can do with this UI in the corner, that grid is now nine by six and everything is scaled back up to actual size. The other big feature I always want in all my sketches is of course to be able to save the output as an SVG. So at any time while I'm running this sketch, I can press S to save whatever's on the canvas to an SVG file. And when I do that, I get a red indicator at the top of the screen to show me that this file is saving and to let me know when the saving is done. The saved SVGs go into this output folder within my sketch folder. Each one gets named with the date and the time at which it was saved. And I also save an identical PNG for each output. I do this because sometimes previewing these SVGs can get slow if they're really complex drawings. And I also just think it's nice to have a flat PNG it makes it really easy to share if I wanna post this on Instagram or whatever. So if I look at that PNG, I can see my one inch square drawn in the center of my nine by six canvas. Let's look at how I can use this for one of my projects in a little bit more detail. I have the empty project template here. There are three files in this project. App.pde is the main processing file for this sketch. This is the thing that sets up the sketch and handles all the resizing and everything for us. It also contains some classes that handle drawing that graph paper grid and some that help with saving the images. I won't go through this file. In most cases, you can pretty much ignore it. 
but I think the code in here is fairly straightforward if you need to make changes or if you just want to take a look and see what's in there. But I will just note that it's a processing requirement that the name of this main file matches the name of your sketch folder. So if you want to rename either this app.pde file or the app folder that contains your sketch, then you need to also rename the counterpart of that so that the file name matches the folder name. The two files here that I actually need to deal with for my project are this sketch.pde file. That's where I'm going to be building my artwork. And then this config.pde is where I can set some configuration preferences for my project. We can look at this sketch file first since I already have it open. This is gonna be the main file for my artwork. I have a draw function in here that works just like the normal processing draw function. So this is where I do all my drawing. And I can also use mouse pressed or key pressed functions if I need those. The one thing to be aware of with that is you'll want to use the canvas mouse X and canvas mouse Y properties instead of the standard mouse X and mouse Y. So you can get the mouse coordinates that are relative to your canvas. And at the top here, I have a comment that shows all the variables that are available for you to use in the sketch. W and H are the width and height of your canvas in pixels. There's a screen scale and a PPI that you can use to determine how much your canvas is getting scaled to fit the screen. And stroke weight gives you the scaled stroke weight that's currently being used in your sketch. If I wanna set up what I want my canvas size and line weight to be, I can do that in the config file. And here I have some settings for how I want my sketch to appear on screen, whether I have a retina display or not, and whether I want my sketch to run full screen. And then you can use this display scale to make things appear actual size on your screen. So my one inch by one inch square actually appears to be one inch by one inch on my specific display you might or might not actually care about that. This is probably the setting you care about the most, what size you want your paper to be. This will be the width and the height in inches. Below that, I can set the maximum plottable area for my plotter. That's 17 by 11 in my case. And I can set a toggle here to specify whether I want my canvas coordinates to be limited to the maximum area that my plotter can draw or whether I want to use the full canvas even if I'm going to be drawing outside of that plottable area. And these last two let me set the size of the pin that I'll be plotting with and whether I want to save that PNG preview image alongside my SVGs. And at the top of this file I've created some constants for some of the values that I use most often for these settings. So instead of having to remember that my Posca 3M marker is 1.2 millimeters, I can just use the constant for that marker. That's pretty much all you need to know to get started. Define your settings in the config file, write your code in the sketch file, and you should be good to go. There is one thing you might want to look out for when it comes to how things get scaled to the screen. The way I typically work with this is to set up the paper size for my project when I get started. And then when I'm drawing graphics in the sketch, I usually just use pixels to size and position everything on the canvas. I have the width and the height of my canvas here, W and H, so I can center things or position them relative to the edges. But I don't usually worry about physical units like inches and millimeters. And that works totally fine. I can see a preview of how my project will look on the canvas size that I've chosen. And when I save the SVG, that's exactly what I'll get. And when I plot that SVG, I get exactly what I see on the screen. That only becomes a problem if I want to make something that's going to be drawn at the same physical size if I change the paper size, or if I wanna work on the same project on different computers with different screen sizes. In those cases, since the scale of the canvas might be changing, then I need to take that scaling into account when I draw on the canvas. So that's exactly what I'm doing here with this centered square I have in the template. 
instead of just drawing this as 100 pixels by 100 pixels, I'm using the PPI variable, the pixels per inch, to make sure that no matter how much the canvas is getting scaled to fit on my screen, this square is always going to be drawn as one inch by one inch. And I can illustrate the difference between those two methods if I draw a second square here, and I'll change it so it's being drawn using only pixel dimensions. I'll make it red just so we can see the difference. Now, when I look at this on my nine inch by six inch canvas, those squares are almost the same size. The red is overlapping the black one a little bit. But if I make this paper size bigger so that it gets scaled down to fit my screen, then you can see now the black square gets scaled down to still be one inch square relative to this canvas that's now 17 inches high. But the red square still gets drawn in screen coordinates at 120 pixels by 120 pixels. So if you care about the physical dimensions, then you need to take the canvas scale into account. But like I said, at least for me, it's not usually something that I worry about. To finish up the video, let's see if we can make something a little bit more interesting than two squares on the canvas. I'll keep it pretty simple and just draw some horizontal lines across the page from the top to the bottom. I want my horizontal lines to be a little bit wobbly, so I'm gonna bring over my line wobbler class. I have a separate video about this line wobbler if you wanna learn more about how that works, but it basically does what the name suggests. It draws wobbly lines. So inside my sketch, I'll delete what I have in my draw function. I'll instantiate my line wobbler class, and then I'll run a quick loop that draws a horizontal line every 10 pixels from the top of my canvas to the bottom. And I'm actually not sure how wobbly I want these lines to be. So I'll listen for key presses and then increase the amplitude of my wobbles when I type the up arrow. Now if I run my sketch, I see those slightly wobbly lines and I can press the up arrow to make them more and more wobbly. When I get something I like, I can press S to save and I'll get that plot ready SVG in my output folder. There it is. What could be easier? If you want to try to use this in your projects, you can grab the empty project template from the GitHub repo and let me know if you use this to make something cool.